This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FI Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview the leading voices from business and politics and explore the topics of current interest that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is John Christopher Bua. He is the Washington political analyst and White House correspondent for Sky News, which is a worldwide and on the internet. He's also adjunct professor at Georgetown University Graduate School of Foreign Service. He also serves as a head of the communication for the Small Business Administration, the Office of Personal Management, and OPEC. Some of you do not know OPEC. It's an uh, overseas private investment corporation. He will be discussing the topic, which is a very near dear to me, foreign policy. Thank you very much, John Christopher, for coming. I really appreciate it. Frank, it's always yeah. a pleasure to see you. John Christopher, I understand you're currently the Washington White House political commentator for Sky News. Can you tell us what it's like to be a U.S. citizen in this role as Sky News is owned by United Kingdom? Well, it, Am I correct? Well, first of all, uh, Sky News is part of the British Sky Broadcasting, which is part of News Corp, which is part of, uh, part of Mr. Uh, Mr. Murdoch's uh, wonderful uh, uh, news organization. Uh, and being an American uh, working at the White House for British Sky uh, Broadcasting is a special, uh, is a special opportunity. Uh, my boss is in London, uh, very clever. Uh, the head of Sky News, John Riley, uh, I'm sure you know, yes. uh, is uh, very supportive of having someone in the White House who has been there, who knows about it, who's worked there, and uh, who knows, let's say, where the bodies are buried, uh, and knows how to get things done, and uh, knows how to do interviews, including uh, an interview with the President of the United States, which we did last July from uh, Cape Coast Castle, Ghana, as you, you have seen with, yeah, uh, with our, our political editor, Adam yes. Bolton. So it's a, comp it's a unique niche, having an American working for the Brits, but one who's been in Washington for, for almost 20 years. Well, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? Well, it's, it's also exciting. It, it gives it me a exciting. great opportunity to, uh, to, to support what they do at Sky News and also to, uh, to really get involved in the policies and politics that make Washington so exciting, as you know, Frank. Yes. Although the Obama administration seems to having tough, trying, and challenging time here in the United States as it passes its first year mark, mm -hmm. what is the general reaction to the Obama administration from international community? Well, I think a lot pen depends on what kind of legislation the president is able to pass and to work with hand in hand with Congress. And when we talk about the international community, uh, a lot of what we talk about is, the, is finance and banking issues. Because now, let's face it, Frank, as you know very well, we live in what's called a borderless economy. Uh, what happens in, in Washington, what happens in New York affects people in uh, all over the world, all over the world in, right. in, in Shanghai and in London, in Paris, uh, and, and uh, Mumbai, everywhere. So they're, they're concerned about what, how much influence the president has over Congress in terms of those kinds of legislative things. But also, I have to tell you, uh, what I know in the international community is, is, is looks at Obama as a breath of fresh air. This is what they tell me from the previous administration. That seemed to be rather, uh, you know, uh, strict in terms of my way or the highway. So there has been a lot of expectation of this administration. Well, there's been a lot of expectation, and I think uh, what this president has found is there, there's been a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems, a lot of hills to, to climb. And I think, uh, you know, he's doing the best he can with what he has, but I, but I do think there are some restrictions on him. And of course, we live in a political world and the midterm elections are coming up in just uh, nine months, let's face it, in November. And we're going to talk about that. Yes, I'm sure. So with one year behind, how would you grade, I'm talking about the total grade of the Obama administration, is it A minus or B plus or a C minus or C plus? Well, I think uh, what, uh, what happened on uh, last Tuesday. You're talking uh, about the Massachusetts. Yes, I'm talking about the Massachusetts where a Democrat ha was dislodged from a very strong Senate seat held by, uh, by Teddy Kennedy for 47 years. And before that, his by his brother, Well, President not Kennedy. directly before that, but yes, before that, by his brother, who, who uh, took it from, uh, from a patrician Republican uh, named uh, Henry Cabot Lodge, who we all know went on to become, uh, become the uh, secretary, uh, the uh, uh, United, UN representative from the United States. But I, I think what, uh, what, what was a wake-up call for the administration and for Democrats, and I've written about it, as you, as you so kindly say, in my blog, The Washington Notebook, which you can see on skynews.com. Go to Washington Notebook, Frank, okay. to your audience. And I wrote a piece called Obama's Wake-Up Call. Uh, 
which really means that this administration, and you're going to see it coming out uh, at the State of the Union to, on Wednesday, the administration really has to start focusing on things that, ap that appeal, that, are, that resonate with working class, hardworking families, their children, their senior citizens, and the people who go to work every day, who want to go to work every day, and bring home that paycheck. And those what this is what the president in his new it's called the uh, new foundation a new uh, new confrontation basically the new uh, direction for America he will be focusing on on these issues that uh, that include uh, tax credits on on uh, on retirement plans etc and I think uh, how about creating jobs well there's the question the, the the problem of creating jobs it depends you know do you stimulate the economy enough so you can create jobs do you take that money away from the Treasury do you tax people so you can create jobs. I mean, the fact is that this president is getting beat up on uh, bailing out the auto industry, which some people say w was inevitable. He is also getting, uh, getting it for, uh, for, for, for saving the banks, some of these banks, which, by the way, the previous administration let, let one or two go, the big ones. And now he is stuck yes. with taking care of this. Now, how does he do it? Where does he, where does he go? And how does he proceed? Uh, I think he has learned a lesson, and I think the Democratic Party has learned a lesson. In other words, there's no being asleep at the switch, and you better offer a good and proper and tough candidate, especially if that candidate is going to take the place of the liberal lion, Teddy Kennedy from Massachusetts. You're right. So you see a brighter horizon. Well, I mean, I, I like to see a brighter horizon. I am American. Uh, we all work together. You are as well. We'd like to see, like out here on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the view here of Washington, the sun does look like it's coming up. And we hope for all. I mean, uh, I don't think any Americans really want to see, no matter what the rhetoric is, Frank, I, I don't think they want to see this president fail. Because if the president fails... We all fail. We, we all fail. We all we have to work together. We're absolutely yeah. right. I understand you press your work as, uh, as I talked, uh, as I said to you uh, about the, you know, when we did the introduction, that you were the head of communication for three federal agencies in the Clinton yes. administration. Yes, I was. What are the differences between the Clinton approach to health care reform and the Obama administration's approach well, to the health care reform? Well, interesting you should mention that because I came to Washington in 1993 to put together programs for, f out of the Democratic National Committee. To, to support the president's, uh, President Clinton's health care reform. It was called the, uh, um, the health care project uh, out of the Democratic National Committee. And I was part of the, the communications operation where we went about and we tried to, to uh, get people on board and work with them on the message of, of Clinton's health care. The problem was the two problems, and they both took different angles. And they both, they both are, are success or failures by, by their choices. The first with President Clinton, and uh, as you know, uh, his wife, the First Lady, now Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, was very much involved. What it, it appeared, Frank, was that the White House was controlling what the agenda was on health care. And healthcare. this time the Congress. Well, this time w they've gone the other way. Right. So they went and said, no, it's not really, uh, we're not branding it as the Obama plan yet. Uh, Senator Baucus, Senator Dodd, so, uh, uh, Take the ownership. Congressman Frank, you, you come back to me. Well, what happened was they went the other direction, you know, one way this way, one way that way. And when you do that, then the, the White House doesn't have it, doesn't have ownership, doesn't, it isn't branded as the Obama plan. So therefore, that's problematic as well. So, you know, hopefully for the country and for the 40 million people who, out of, who don't have health care and practic practically another 40 million people who are just a paycheck away from health care. Uh, and there, in fact, there are people who are not going to jobs because they don't have the they don't have health care, or they're not they're in jobs they they don't like because they know if they left the job they're not going to get health care in the new job. It's all uh, predicated on health care, and it's a crisis in this country, Frank. Uh, and it has to be dealt with one way or the other. Some people say, you know, after a while they're just going to have to realize that single payer is the only way to go. I don't know about that, but uh, you know, we have a crisis, and we have a crisis in health care. Thing, the costs are going up. And the, the ability to maintain good health care is, is not. Mm -hmm. 